Hmm? Inside or in line? In line, around the corner. everyone here for being devoted uh, to Robotech and uh, he wanted to be here so badly uh, it was going to be his first Comic Con in a long time but unfortunately he couldn't make it. Uh, actually you know uh, I'm gonna uh, actually uh, take it from here um, since I'm gonna kind of uh, fill in for Frank Catalano I'm nowhere near as good looking as this gentleman. <laughs> 
and used to work until the wee hours of the morning. And sometimes, you know, it, it was very tough. And sometimes you'd go to sleep in the hallway. Other times, episodes had to be created and written. And often, uh, because of the number of writers they had, had to be rewritten in the studio, which also made the process even longer. You know, Carl was an idea guy uh, and had lots of great ideas. And when you write ADR, it's about sync. And I've always been horrible at that. I'm more of an, I, you know, I go for the funny line, I go for the reaction, I go for the reality of the scene. Hey, bro, come back. Where are you going? Bro, I can get a job. <laughs> and then you get some of the writers going, no, that's not going to sink. We can't use it because of the number of flaps. You know, the two characters, these in print, uh, the two characters talking. I was never interested in that. I was always interested in the story uh, rather than, and character rather than the scene. You know what your problem is? You don't know how to communicate with people. I always wanted to be curly. I thought Rand had that side to him, and I have one thing where he's boop, 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 and that's in there, and you know, the Three Stooges, and there's lots of stuff. And I thought that was appropriate for the character, because Rand used to love to play around, too. He was a fighter, and one of the things I think Rick Hunter had with him is you gotta take this seriously. And I never really could. I'm not exactly your basic hero type. Uh, anyway, um, we're very lucky to have that clip uh, that we had pre-recorded earlier from uh, Mr. Catalano. Uh, we, play we placed that at the last second in the presentation uh, in lieu of uh, having him in person. Uh, for those of you who don't already know, uh, he was the voice of uh, Rand in uh, Robotech. And uh, also, um, he uh, was going to share uh, some of his early experiences, one of which was uh, very interesting was uh, uh, he, during the early uh, marketing uh, events for Robotech uh, back in the 80s, uh, he was actually a stand-in for Rick Hunter. Uh, many of you don't, don't know that, uh, uh, you know, obviously we can talk about this openly now. Tony Oliver is very proud of having undergone a spectacular weight loss. He's uh, very trim and in much greater health now than he was back then. And so for marketing reasons, they had used uh, uh, Mr. Catalano back then. And the fans were overjoyed to see him, you know, he was a thin, young, a good-looking gentleman. But then as soon as he opened his mouth, they knew, oh, that, wait, that's not the voice of Rick. So it was really interesting how the fans were very much attuned to it. And here's some footage of him back in the 80s. Hey, Rick. And he actually shares a lot of his experiences in, in this book he had just uh, completed uh, last year called uh, Random Rap, Confessions of a Robotech Warrior. He had also updated the edition this year. And so you can actually pick this up from Amazon and so forth. It's actually really interesting. This is the first time one of the cast members actually put a really detailed account of how Robotech was put together and his experiences and how it formed his career. So this is like a really interesting inside look behind the scenes into the Robotech universe from the point of view of uh, Mr. Catalano. And uh, also, uh, we had worked with him on a much larger uh, documentary, uh, and this is uh, uh, dedicated to Carl, uh, the original producer of Robotech. He, he was a brainchild. Oh. <laughs> he definitely deserves a lot of recognition for this, because Carl was the brainchild behind uh, Carl Masick's Robotech universe happening. Uh, when uh, the original director of the Robotech series, Bob Barron, had died early, uh, in the past decade, uh, Carl was afraid that the folklore uh, about, about how Robotech had come together was disappearing. And so, hence, we went about to produce this documentary. And uh, lo and behold, you know, I, uh, the irony, Carl himself had passed away, but we felt that it was important enough that we didn't let it, uh, uh, the project end. And it was originally going to be called uh, uh, the Robotech Minute with Carl Masick. Uh, it was going to be a series of smaller shorts, documentary shorts, that we were going to release on the internet uh, with Carl. But then uh, in last year we had announced that we had picked up a new home video distributor, and so we decided to release it properly through home video in a much better format on DVD. And uh, actually this comes back to the uh, home video distribution situation. Um, uh, last year, many of you heard the news, uh, we had some uncertainty that our longtime partner, 80 Vision, who had been our partner for much of the last previous decade, 
uh, and was once the largest home video distributor for anime, uh, had gone out of business. And, uh, but you guys here were the first to find out. Um, actually, here. Uh, actually, one other thing to cover is, we did kind of cover ourselves. Even though we were off the home video market for a little while, uh, everything had been transitioning over to online distribution. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, people ask us, what's the best way to watch Robotech on TV? And if you have one of those smart televisions that are internet enabled, we would just tell them, Hulu. You know, you don't have to wait for a particular time of the day. Now you can just call it up, call up the episode you want. It's ad supported, you know, nothing illegal or bootleg about it, and just watch it any time of the day, totally ad supported, free. And uh, also on YouTube as well. However, I know a lot of people, you know, uh, they're, they have this attitude like, you can take that cold, shiny disc, you know, away from my cold, dead fingers. You know, even though everything's on the internet, nowadays people watch their TV, uh, TV shows on their laptops. You know, there's people who just prefer to have their Star Trek episodes on DVD, so in case there's a nuclear war and the whole power grid and internet goes down, they can still watch their Star Trek and Robotech. And so, uh, uh, we picked up our partner last year. We announced it here, a &E Home Entertainment. Uh, we had committed to this ridiculous uh, commitment that we were going to have this uh, product out uh, by late last year. And we got lucky. Uh, and actually, um, uh, I'll go into a little more detail soon. Uh, it's actually available in stores ne uh, now, and it's also available online. Uh, $39 to $49.95 for each one of the sagas. Great price. And you can get everything for $99.95, uh, under 100 bucks. And if you go to a dis discount retailer, it's even less. And the end uh, result, uh, by the time the dust cleared, we ended up with over 10 hours of DVD extras. It's the most we've ever had. And actually, I'm going to cover some of it here. Uh, one of the fans uh, last year during one of the panels actually came to us and asked us a very straightforward question, which was, you know, uh, Robotech, all of Robotech had been remastered. It looks great now compared to before visually. But uh, the one problem that they had was, you know, it felt like we had ignored the Sentinels. The Sentinels looked old, noisy, and we, we took that seriously. We committed to, a, you know, uh, based on fan requests, that we were going to go through and we were going to use some new software that we were testing to do a new digital restoration of the Sentinels. And, but last year we were kind of, you know, a little uh, standoffish about it. We didn't know what we could do by October because uh, Annie asked us, hey, can you get this done by October? And we were like, okay, this was Comic-Con when we just signed our deal, you know, same time this year, last year. And we were like, uh, so how much lead time do you need on this to get the disc manufactured? And he said, well, we need a couple of months to have the disc manufactured. And we were like, so we need this sent to you by tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, so we were after, you know, we had a fun time at Comic-Con, but we were miserable after that. We were working day and night, getting this all done. And uh, this is uh, some of the samples we showed you last year. Uh, this is before, after, and this is the Robotech promo clip, which was the worst looking single piece of video on uh, the DVDs, and here's a split screen to show you the difference. And then we actually went further into our source materials, and we actually even got more of the picture than before. Uh, so in many cases, this is one of the most extreme examples. You weren't getting the full picture. And uh, here's a nice little demo we're going to show you. Uh, some of you have heard that we actually changed the content of the sentence, and then, which is true. Uh, one of the things we had discussed with uh, Carl was that Carl felt that it was an incomplete project. Uh, many of you heard the stories if you read his commentary in Robotech Art 3, is that the Sentinels was essentially a, a salvage project where he had to put it together really rapidly with just what was done. It was three incomplete episodes and he had to make it work and unfortunately some of the footage was not completed and there were holes, gaping holes in the Sentinel story he wanted to tell, even with the home video. And so there were these jarring scenes where there would be a Southern Cross era shuttle launching, and then suddenly in the next shot, it would be a Macross era shuttle. And then in the next shot, it would be another era shuttle again. And it was just because he had to patchwork it together just to tell a story with the footage that was available. And now we were able to actually now uh, go back and finish some of these shots properly so that it all flowed better. And uh, here's uh, an example right here. Remember, we are about to embark on 
on an expedition to the farthest boundaries of the universe. It's enough to make anybody nervous. Control, this is Mission Command. Shuttle reports Dr. Lang and his team are now on board. All our systems show ready. You are cleared for departure, Mission Command. Uh, one thing you also notice is uh, when we showed the split screen of the before and after, uh, in the before, some of the shots during the panning was a little bit jerky. One of the things you'll notice in Robotech is that when you, whenever you watch it on these new progressive you know, LCD flat screen TVs, is it's always a little jerky or sometimes you get what's called interlacing because of the way old TVs used to operate. They operated on a different frame rate than film. What we actually did here on the Sentinels is we actually converted the frame rate back to the original frame rate of the film it was shot on. So it was at 24 frames per second. And so uh, it actually up converts better. So this is the, now Sentinels has gone from being one of the worst looking segments on the Robotech sets, being one of the better looking ones. So uh, we're very proud of what happened there.